So back in December of 2016, I picked up this 2001 Forester S. The previous owner said that the engine had blown up and that there was a hole on the top of the block. When we went to go look at the car, we weren't able to confirm that, but he took an offer of 600 bucks, so we ended up picking the car up. Needless to say, the engine didn't start, and the battery had blown up, so we just kind of had to roll it into a spot until I could get back to it after the holidays. The engine looked fine when it was in the car, but when we pulled it out, we discovered that it did have a hole in the block, so we needed to find a donor engine. We found an EJ25D for 200 bucks, and while it's not the exact same engine that's in my Forester, I did a little research and it sounded like it was compatible. So we went ahead and picked it up. Mechanically, the EJ25D and the EJ251 are remarkably similar, despite the EJ25D being dual overhead cam and the EJ251 being single overhead cam. The biggest difference is actually in the fuel systems. The two engines use a totally different way of managing the idle speed. The EJ25D uses an EGR system, and the 25D uses the older EV1 style injectors, whereas the 251 uses the later EV6 style. And then there was another huge issue. The EJ251 uses a MAP sensor, whereas the EJ25D uses a mass airflow sensor. Because I didn't get the ECM for the EJ25D, I had pretty much two options. I could swap the heads from the 251 onto the 25D, or I could put the entire 25D engine and intake into my car and plug the 251 ECM into it. I opted to swap in the older EJ25D engine primarily because we just didn't know the condition of the heads on the 251. It's possible that the valve train on the 251 could have been all screwed up, and we probably could have found and fixed any damage that happened to the heads during the swap, but there were just too many unknowns and I didn't feel comfortable swapping the heads over. The EJ25D that we picked up seemed to be in really good shape, so we just went ahead and went with it. Now the biggest challenge with this is that the EJ25D uses a different fuel system than what the EJ251 ECM is expecting. To mitigate this, I went ahead and swapped the sensors over. I took the sensors out of the 251 and put them into the 25D motor. Surprisingly enough, pretty much all of the sensors swapped right over. The sensor swap wasn't perfect though. The EJ25D idle control valve is completely different and is not compatible with the EJ251 ECM at all. And the EJ25D uses an EGR valve, whereas the EJ251 does not, so we had to work around that. We also had to drill a hole in the intake manifold to accommodate the MAP sensor, and we had to extend the wiring harness so that it could reach the ignition coil. With the right tools and workspace, pulling one of these boxer engines is super simple. We managed to get the engine out in about 45 minutes and back in in about 45 minutes. And much to my amazement, the engine, no joke, started up the very first time. And it started right up too. It didn't sputter or have any troubles. It started right up. At this point, we hadn't come up with a good solution to mitigate the fact that the two engines use totally different ways of managing the idle control valve. So here it was actually idling without one. Huge thanks to j and Automotive out in Malina, Oregon. If you're in the Portland, Oregon area and you're looking for a good little shop, you should check them out. They do a great job. I definitely couldn't have finished this project without their help. So needless to say, the Forester project isn't done, and while I am using it as my daily driver, there's still a lot of other things that I need to do. So if you like this video and others on my channel, you can like, comment, and subscribe, and you can definitely expect more videos like this in the future.